Hi, I'm Bosman Forex from Alpha Capital Trading, and here is why I took my US 30 shorts during New York session today. Now, if you can look straight on the charts, you can see that I took some shorts right around the same area I was taking buys during the start of the session. And I had my stop losses just around this area with my target being an open TP, but I took, I, I, I later around shifted my stop loss around this area with my target being, with my target being, we continue with the lose. So let's just jump straight into um, the trading view charts and we can observe what happened in this trade. So if I can now zoom in, I won't go over the market structure again because I had mentioned briefly in the previous breakdown that I was looking for a continuation of this bearish trend. Now, if we come to this area, you'll find that we have been, I've marked out a couple of things. Um, just as a quick breakdown of what market, how you spot shifts in market structure, in our case, we had a very bearish market structure, so low, low, a series of lower highs and lower lows. And as we normally approach a very discounted point, we usually expect to see a shift in market structure after which we shift. By And by shift in structure, I mean that the overall swing low should not be taken out or we should not see a significant break of the, low, the, lowest, the lowest point. Today, we tried getting um, the break of the most recent high. However, price failed to properly take it out. And so we ended up staying within this extremes. And thereafter, we have just seen a break here. Now, the break is what we're, the area that I'm talking about right now is this area. Because you can see we've taken it out with just one candle. My expectation is that we don't only take it out by one candle, but even this current candle that is forming should not be able to progress all the way up. Or if it does, it should not be able to break these areas that were formed during the New York session start. So if we can now open up uh, and hide everything, you'll notice that I have highlighted a couple of things here. So let's just um, look back at them. So you can see I was expecting market structure to favor the continuation of shorts by a strong break and close below the swing low. That was the first thing. Second thing is that we had this liquidity demand zone that was formed that we were waiting for buys initially. So if you remember what we were talking about in terms of buys, we were expecting that as price forms the, the close proximity zones, we wanted to see a break test but then failure to close below, and then we see something like this. Unfortunately, what we ended up seeing was a break and close below. So that means any retest that was going to happen was going to be a retest of this and a continuation to the downside, which is, as you can see, we have the demand area that I've plotted and then the close proximity, and then price breaks below. And then now we came back up. So as you can see, based off this candle that is here, I've highlighted that it's a break of a liquidity demand zone, which is this liquidity demand zone I've talked about here. So we ended up seeing that break over there. And afterwards, we saw price really struggle to push higher, courtesy of this obstacle that was formed. And it is at this point that I got in right after this bullish candle closed the way it did. I jumped in on sales from here with the anticipation that we will drop all the way down to the next obstacle, which is this area. And after this, if we do see a strong close below, of which we had already started seeing a close below, I was expecting that you can see a continuation to the downside. So this was pretty much a very straightforward trade because there is one phenomenon I always talk about. I always say if price is not going up, it's going to go down. So in our case here, we tried getting in on buys to take it up. Price failed to do so. So if we're not going up, you're going down. And that is a very nice way of always being fluid in the markets and being able to adapt to the certain scenarios that are there. So this is this was my breakdown of the US 30 trade I took. Of course, if you jump straight into the VIX, as we had done in the previous breakdown video, you'll notice that we have, um, we with that drop, we also had seen a shift to the upside and price was reacting from this area on the hourly. So pretty simple, always as you wait for 
shifts or buys on VIX always anticipate shorts on US 30 because they are inversely correlated. So as you can see right now, we have we were the demand area here, price shifted up, and at the same time as price shifted up here, US 30 was giving us a nice bearish drop. So I'm not expecting too much because it's just the start of the week, but towards the con as the week progresses, we'll be able to see what happens because um, if we go down to the daily, you'll notice that we are approaching a very interesting daily demand area right around where we are at right now. As you can see, we are seated at a really lovely demand area. In the event price fails to drop, I mean, rally from this point, we'll probably go, come all the way down here before seeing a bit of a rally to the upside. But all in all, we will make executions once we get to the once we get to that price. Thank you so much for watching and um, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.